Damien slowly trudges along the cobblestone path toward the church, shivering in the rapidly cooling air. He looks up just in time to catch a pair of elderly women walking directly toward him. He turns away slightly, concealing the sheath of his katana behind his leg. The woman closest to him, none the wiser, offers a wrinkled smile to him as she passes by, making a beeline for the silver BMW parked next to the Passat. Damien watches after the ladies for a moment and continues toward the church, thanking whatever deity might be listening for temporarily breaking the cycle of dark thoughts swirling around his mind. He examines his hand as he walks, grunting in frustration as he once again finds himself unable to break through the haze. He pulls open the door to the church, his stomach churning violently as a wave of warm air overtakes him. He rounds the corner into the hallway, coming to an abrupt stop as he catches sight of Vivian speaking with Leonard in the shadows not more than a few paces away. He pulls back before Leonard can spot him, his vision swimming. Pull it together. She can't see you like this. He takes several deep breaths through his mouth, gulping down the bile threatening to rise into his throat. He rises to full height after a moment and steps back around the corner, forcing his shoulders to relax. As if on cue, Vivian turns her head toward him. Well, well, well. Look who's back. I heard you had a little trip through the city. How was it? Damien shrugs, forcing himself to meet his sire's analytical stare. I uh, met a thin blood gang when I was in a restaurant. Damien freezes momentarily. At a restaurant, you moron. He clears his throat and continues. They invited me to their base, and their leader even wanted me to join the Anarchs. Vivian falters, her eyebrows raising in surprise. Well, despite accepting a random invite from strangers being the equivalent of getting in a van that has free candy written on it, it looks like you came out unscathed. Damien narrows his eyes. So, what did you and your new friends talk about? They mostly introduced me to the gang and their purpose within the Anarchs. Then they asked about me, what sect I belonged to, if I had a sire, all that stuff. Vivian raises her chin. Did they say anything about my clan? Basically painted you as a bunch of monsters. Vivian nods almost imperceptibly, squaring her jaw. Ah, I see. Well, you know that's not entirely true, though, right? Damien falls silent. Vivian's brow furrows, her lips trembling. You know about the clans, right? Ventru, Bruja, Gangrel, and so on. Their members are all part of these clans because of their blood. And they get certain powers from their blood. But let's take, um, Gangrel as an example. Not every gangrel is a wild savage living in the woods. Some of them work within corporations. I've even seen a gangrel CEO in my time. So, in short, your vampiric blood doesn't necessarily define you. Just like how astrology doesn't define your capabilities as a lover, or whatever. Vivian's eyes begin to redden, triggering a wave of sympathy within Damien. He nods almost on instinct, something within him desperate to reassure her. Vivian nods, sniffling slightly. That's good. Also, did Leonard tell you of my plans tomorrow yet? He told me you had plans, not what you were doing. Well, I'll be having a meeting with one of the Camarilla Primogens and the Anarch Baron. What? How the hell did you climb the ranks so fast? Vivian smirks her confidence returning as quickly as it had left. That's the fun part. I didn't. I got invited. Apparently, we're in Camarilla territory. The Camis found out we were here and sent a hound after us. Said hound wants me to join a meeting between the Primogen and the Baron. Damien nods along for a moment, stopping as her words begin to sink in. Vivian, sensing his trepidation, leans toward him. When is that meeting? 9 p.m. Why? Damien pulls his cell phone from his pocket and glances around before texting Sam. Hey Sam, does your boss have a meeting tomorrow at 9 p.m.? No, we have our meeting at 8 tomorrow if that's what you mean. Hey, man, I might not be able to attend tomorrow then. 
something came up. Family issues? Damien recoils, swearing he can hear the sarcasm through the screen. Yeah, sorry, man. Damien looks up. I'm fairly certain you're being tricked. What do you mean? The Baron is supposed to have a meeting with me an hour before that one. He also just doesn't have a meeting then, it seems. You better check twice. This isn't something I can just easily brush off, you know? Damien turns his attention back to his phone. Yo, Sam, it's me again. Does your boss have a meeting at 9 p.m. at all? No, I'm with him right now. We're discussing our meeting, so take it from the man himself. Damien shakes his head. He definitely doesn't have a meeting at that time. Vivian lifts her head toward the ceiling, growling as she strides down the hallway. Ugh, I knew it was too good to be true. Something within Damien crumbles. He slumps to the ground, burying his head in his crossed arms, a tidal wave of anger and guilt flooding through him all at once. Vivian turns and jogs toward him. She kneels beside him and places a hand on his shoulder. Sorry, Vivian. Why are you apologizing? Isn't this all because of me? Didn't the Sabbath find us because of me? Didn't we have to flee from Berlin because of me? Isn't this all my fault? Damien lets his head fall back onto his arms, his reserves depleting. Vivian takes a seat beside him, resting an elbow on her knee. Damien, none of this is your fault. Wasn't it I who decided to take you under my wing? Wasn't it I who was foolish enough to mingle with the Sabbath? Wasn't it I who pulled you into all of this? I brought you into this, and I am getting you out of it. Got it? Damien stares at his sire in abject astonishment. The grisly scene at the gas station replays in his mind once more. The gore, the smile, the sadistic amusement behind it. All of it. How? Vivian moves closer to him and rests her forehead against the side of his head, wrapping an arm around him. How can this be the same woman who... Fresh tears pour down Damien's cheeks as he squeezes his eyes shut and leans back against his sire, her warmth radiating through the touch of her cold skin. He sucks in a shuddering breath and tries to speak, hearing instead the beginnings of a wail emanating from his throat. Vivian holds him ever closer, slowly running her fingers through his hair. This is Vivian. This is the woman who saved me. I may not be able to forgive her yet, but I can damn sure try. She deserves that much. If I may butt in... Vivian and Damien turn toward the man in unison, the latter hurriedly wiping the tears from his face. Oh, right, you're still here. Sorry, of course. I'm terribly sorry. I wasn't aware of the Primogen's true intentions. However, I can say that the Hound, Leah, really is on the Anarch side. Vivian lets out an exasperated breath as Damien regains his composure. Are you still in contact with her? Yes, but don't forget, she's under the sheriff's boot almost around the clock. I'm afraid she won't be able to assist us. Oh, fuck. I don't know if I can take on a primogen in a fight. Especially not if she has ghouls with her. Why don't we just get out of here? No. You've made such good progress with the Anarchs. We can't let it all go to waste. Without them, we'll never be able to take on the voice. But the Camarilla and the voice? <laughs> Taking both of them on at once is suicide. Plus, they don't know almost anything about you, and I'd rather keep it that way. Vivian sighs heavily and closes her eyes. I'll go alone. I'll have to follow their plan. But we don't know what they'll do to you. Vivian turns toward him, her lips contorted into a weak but motherly smile. Damien, my child... Even if this results in my final death, imprisonment, whatever, it will solve our problems. Damien jumps to his feet, incredulous. I won't let you kill yourself for nothing. I'm not potentially killing myself for nothing. If I die, the voice will no longer hunt you and the Camarilla will be off your back. If they imprison me, the voice will come into conflict with the Camarilla eventually. Whatever may happen to me, it will benefit all of us. All I am 
is a pawn in this gigantic game of chess. Pawns are there to be sacrificed for the protection of the king or to gain something greater. This sacrifice will do both. And hey, who knows? Maybe we're worrying far too much about this. Maybe it's not as bad as we think. Why can't I come with you? Maybe we can take them on together. Do you want to die as well? We don't know how many of her allies she'll have with her. We don't even know how powerful she is by herself. I'd like to minimize the losses. Do you understand? Bloody tears escape Vivian's eyes, carving twin crimson paths down her pale cheeks. Damien swallows hard and walks away, his ears pounding, regret surging through him. The hatred he had felt toward her, the thirst to prove himself, the contempt he felt for himself, all of it stealing away so many precious hours he could have spent by her side. It's not fair. It's not fucking fair. Damien punches the wall, pain exploding through his knuckles. He backs away and turns toward the pair, fists balled at his sides. I do, but if they kill you, I will avenge you. If they imprison you, I will free you. Was I such a good sire? Am I really worth it? You saved me! I am alive because of you. I could never repay you for saving my life. Vivian gets to her feet, smiling. She meets his eyes. Remember what I said about pawns? Sacrifice me for your own protection and win this game. For us. Vivian turns and walks toward the staircase.